It's Platt, and today I try one genuine beer. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the particular beer we have today is Miller Genuine Draft. I, uh, I said a while back, I want to start introducing some of these brands that were popular in the past, but kind of fade away or we forgot about. Uh, if you're of a certain age, these were probably beers you might have drank in high school or college, whatever. Uh, and for me, one of my personal favorites in those times was Miller Genuine Draft. A little background on Miller Genuine Draft. The beer was originally introduced in 1985, and at the time it was known as Miller High Life Genuine Draft. Now, they eventually did end up dropping the High Life part of the name, partly due to, by the time the mid-80s rolled around, Miller High Life, the brand, had kind of fallen out of favor, was kind of looked down on, uh, had kind of lost its status as a premium American beer. Uh, Miller at the time kind of was worried about that, worried that they were becoming a light beer company, just known for light beer for Miller. Uh, at the time, you still had Bud Light, but then you also had Budweiser with it. Coors Light also had Coors Original. There was kind of a pairing where Miller had thought they kind of lost that pairing and was only known for uh, light beer. So they uh, did something kind of different. Uh, they ended up hiring an outside company, a company called Calais and Company, to develop this beer. And uh, that's what they did. Um, oddly enough, the, the, the premise for this beer was actually the old Miller High Life recipe. They took the old Miller High Life recipe and basically did a different treatment. Uh, one of the big selling points for the beer when it first came out was that it was cold filtered and never pasteurized. And they may have used the term at the time, never heat pasteurized. I don't remember. I want to say some advertisements might use the term heat pasteurized. Some might have just never pasteurized. But that was kind of a selling point. Now, I had a family member that worked for Miller at the time, and one of the he, I remember him telling me one of the big points was the cold filtration, that they spent X millions of dollars on this process, that this beer was kind of breakthrough in a certain sense of the new technology. Supposedly some of it came from Japan. I, I, I couldn't find that in my research, but I remember him telling me about that. Um, but what the goal of Cali and Company was, was they wanted to take the old High Life recipe, but... They wanted to create a beer that tasted like High Life on draft. They wanted draft beer taste in a bottle, Un unlike Keystone, which was bottle beer taste in a can. This was draft beer taste in a bottle. And so that's how they formulated it. Again, they did a little tweak on the treatment, but this is basically Miller High Life in a certain sense, which I thought kind of fascinating because when this beer came out, it was really kind of popular, even though High Life itself had fallen out of favor. Uh, when this beer first came out, it actually was highly thought of. I remember uh, personally at the time just falling in love with the beer. Uh, in 1999, this beer won gold for the American Premium Lager category at the 1999 uh, World Beer Cup. In 2003, it took silver for the same category at the Great American Beer Fest. Again, highly thought of beer at the time, but about the mid-2000s, Things started to fade. It started to lose its uh, market segment. Other beers started to come in. People's taste started to change. And the brand just couldn't keep up. Uh, around 2007, Miller did come out with something called that we know of today as Miller 64, but at the time it was Miller Genuine Draft 64. It was a 64-ounce, 2.8% ABV beer, low-calorie, low-ABV beer, Kind of like High Life before High Life, but even more so as far as the ABV goes. Um, just never gained traction. I don't know if it was because they named it, you know, used the genuine draft name when that name was kind of fading, or just the concept might have been a little before its time. But that brand never caught traction, even though I think it's still available out there. Now, I do have to admit, and I've kind of alluded to it, I personally love this beer. When I was in college, this was my go-to beer. Now, at the time, they were charging a buck or two more, a 12-pack, than the regular Miller Lite, and then definitely more than what I could really afford, which is Milwaukee's Best or Bush Lite or those. So what I would do at the time is they sold six packs of the 7-ounce Pony Bottles. I'd either get that or maybe I'd split a regular six-pack with a buddy, 
and we would start the evening with the good stuff, and then we would progress to Milwaukee's Best or Natty Light or whatever. Or if we went to a bar, we made sure the ladies noticed we were drinking the Genuine Draft, but when we got to the kegger, <laughs> we switched gears. But this is this beer, to me, is what I is a hot is a hot uh, day beer. Just man, on a hot day, it just goes down nice and easy. I can drink a ton of these things. Uh, really nice beer. Well, before we check this out, let's check out the stats. So today I thought I'd talk about uh, what I call B-team beers or the economy line of beers. Most of your major breweries have a top tier and then an economy. Uh, for Budweiser, it's Bud and Bud Light, but they also have Bush Light, Natural Light, Coors, Coors Light, Keystone, Miller Light, Miller Genuine Draft, Milwaukee's Best. Uh, these beers have been around, I always kind of thought of as college beers, and a lot of people won't even touch them. Well, that's the cheap stuff. I only drink this highfalutin uh, Bud Miller Coors. The reality is, there might not be that big a difference. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I had a relative that worked for Miller. And one of the things he talked to me about was that cost-wise, as far as to produce just the can of beer, just a 12-ounce can of beer, there really wasn't a huge cost difference between Miller Lite and Milwaukee's Best. Both probably had the same can as far as the aluminum can, you know, technology goes. Uh, they both made the same place. Recipe-wise, maybe some tweaks. Both same brewmaster brewed it. Strong possibility the same yeast strain might have been used. Again, just some small tweaks, but is it really worth the price difference? That's kind of the real rub. Um, now, not to say that there's no differences. Uh, a good example is the Budweiser line of beers. Bud and Bud Light uh, use corn as their adjunct, where Natural Light and Bush Light, I believe, use cornstarch or corn as your adjunct. So there are different recipes. Again, they're brewed at the same facility. Budweiser is not going to, Anheuser-Busch is not going to spend the money to have a separate natural light brewery or a separate bush light brewery. And the same for Coors and Miller. So they're brewed at the same facility. Again, I got a strong feeling the yeast strain may be, may be the same. Um, again, you might use two row instead of six row barley in this recipe or whatever, but a lot of the, a lot of the other is really the same. And where the real difference is, is the marketing dollars. Now for brands like Bush Light, Natural Light, there's some marketing, but you don't see a ton of marketing for Keystone Light or Milwaukee's Best. I know they did sponsor the World Series of Poker a while back, but compared to what Bud Miller's and Coors spend, and they spend it on Super Bowl ads and the national title games and you know all these other big events where you don't see those lower brands. And I think that's where a lot of the price that's where a lot of your dollars goes is into the marketing of that. Now, I did see an interesting article in Business Insider around the Super Bowl about a taste test, about this same kind of concept. They took five beers, Bud Light and Coors Light, along with Miller High Life, PBR, and Natural Light, and they did a taste test to see, if, A, if people could tell the difference and which one they liked the best, and Miller High Life won, which, if you think about those five beers, Miller High Life would kind of be in the middle. It's not price-wise or considered premium like Bud Light Coors Light, but it has a little better reputation than PBR and Natty Light. So that makes sense, but as far as what we want as beer drinkers, is there that much difference? And all these beers, I, I sort of what I call consumption beers. Beers that you would have at a pool party, you know, out at the lake, whatever. You're going to drink a lot of them. It's a warm day. You're not really savoring this you're drinking it out of a can um at the end of the day I, after your third or fourth i'm not sure the difference um maybe this might be a topic for video maybe we might do a, a side by side taste test bush light versus bud light or coors light versus keystone light uh interesting to hear what you think about that leave a comment down below if you have an opinion uh, on that well enough talking about beer let's drink this beer Plenty, 
of bubbles, a nice little thin white head, gold in color. Uh, pretty simple nose. You're not gonna these type beers. You're not gonna get a lot of uh, hops or anything. Let's give her a try. Oh my God, that goes down so easy. I have I have a harder time drinking water than this stuff. It is just a little malt sweetness. Um, not again. You're not going to get a lot of hops, but it is it is balanced in the sense that this is not thick or viscous in the sweetness and. Um, it's just a little maltiness, and then it kind of goes away. Um, there is almost a crispness to the beer. I don't know if it's because of the hops or just the way it's brewed, but it does have a, a fairly nice, uh, clean finish. This is a very simple beer. Uh, again, like all these beers, but it just, it's a perfect hot weather beer. This used to be my beer a lot of times when I got off work, I'd work all day i was sweaty i was still in the uniform give me an mgd boom, boom, boom. you know i i don't know if i tasted the first two or three after i get off work but this is just a nice beer again i it's cool to kind of go back and taste some of these older beers kind of kick in memories oh i remember that you know i did that or that or man this reminds me of that bar that always had this beer you know on happy iron stuff and uh, if you get a chance, go back and revisit some of these old brands. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.